In this video, you will learn the difference between a so-called loaded and unloaded voltage divider. You have already seen what an unloaded voltage divider is if you have watched the last video. Basically, two uh, resistors connected in series to each other and depending on the overall voltage in the network and on the values of the various resistors, you can compute the voltage drop across both resistors using this standard equation of the voltage divider. And if you place another, a third resistor in parallel to one of the two existing resistors, you change the setup of the network, you violate the assumption of current equality, and this is what this video is about. You will learn what the difference between these two variants is, you will learn what the term loaded actually means, and you will also see how you can derive the formula for using this special form of the voltage divider based on Kirchhoff's loop rule and also on his junction rule. And you will also learn up to which ratio of resistance values you should connect a load to the voltage divider in practice applications. And finally, you will look at a hands-on example of a typical loaded voltage divider. And as always, there's going to be a summary of the most important facts from this video at the end for you. My name is Andreas from The Fearless Engineer, and here we go. Now, before we dive into the concept of the loaded voltage divider, let's quickly review the concept of the general voltage divider equation, which we have talked about in a previous video. We have seen that in its simplest form, a voltage divider simply consists of a series of connected resistors, such as in the diagram in the schematic, which you can see here on the bottom left. We have a voltage source on the left, we have two resistors on the right, R1 and R2, and you can look at the voltage drops, it's 1.67 volts for the upper one with 100, 100 ohms, and 3.33 volts for the lower one with 200 ohms, and based on the ratio of resistors, you can also find the same ratio of division among the two voltages, and also the sum of both voltages um, are identical to the total total voltage provided by the voltage source. So uh, we can derive based on these observations and on the equations which we have um, seen in the last video that this equation here can be used to determine the unknown um, voltage U2 in case you are looking for this. In this example it is given, but um, were it not given, we could simply multiply the total voltage drop across the voltage source with the ratio of resistance number 2 divided and the um, sum of the resistors R1 and R2. So based on this very simple equation, we could find the unknown equation u2 and if we were looking for u1 instead we could simply exchange the uh, the the index of u2 and r2 and arrive at the same computation also there's another variant which replaces u total with the other voltage u1 this changes the equation a little bit but uh, if you want more details on this um, have a look at this at this uh, previous video in this video however we are not considering this very simple form but we are considering a form where something has changed in this setup here of the voltage divider resistors. Up until now, in the simple circuit on the previous slide and uh, in the previous videos, we have always assumed that the current through both resistors would be the same. But in many, many scenarios in, in practice, this is not the case. If you take a look at this very similar circuit, it's similar to the previous uh, one in the sense that we also have a voltage source here on the left. We have two resistors, R1 and R2. But now we have another, a third resistor here on the right, which is um, of 10 kilo ohm, uh, which is of the size 10 kilo ohms compared to 100 ohms to the left. So only a very small current flow which is now flowing through this uh, resistor which we have connected in parallel. And the idea is that this could, for example, be a voltmeter which we had connected in parallel to this resistor here to measure the voltage drop. And on the display of the voltmeter, we would not find 5 volts, which could be expected because both resistors are of the of the same size, but we would uh, read something um, a little bit less than 5 volts, in this case 4.975 volts. So it's almost 5 volts and in a practical, in a real life um, measuring scenario, you wouldn't probably notice uh, the difference and would it attribute this small um, um, deviation from 5 volts to measurement inaccuracies, but in this perfect simulation, there is no reason at all why this should be less than 5 volts. And this um, voltage drop here across the uh, resistor number one is above five volts. So the fraction that's missing on the lower side is now um, added up to the voltage drop for the upper resistor. So there seems to have something uh, changed something. And uh, this change is due to a very simple fact. The current flow through the 
upper resistor is not identical to the current flow through the lower resistor because we now have a third resistor in parallel which um, is stealing away, so to speak, a small fraction of the current. And this is the reason why the, why the conventional voltage divider does not work in this scenario. Now let's look a little bit deeper into this setup here. Here you can see a part of the circuit we have just um, investigated and you can see that the current flowing through the connected load is uh, in this setup here. Now the resistor has been changed in its size a little bit. It's now one kilo ohm instead of 10 kilo ohms and um, therefore also the current has increased here. It's now 4.76 milliamps and this current is also called the load current because um, this resistor number three here is basically the load which we connected to the voltage divider. You can imagine the voltage divider as a means of, of adjusting the voltage to provide a certain well-defined amount of voltage drop for um, a, a, another circuit we would like to connect to the voltage divider. This could be an LED and a resistor which we put in series to each other or something else. And um, this connected resistance, this circuit is called the load of the voltage divider. And this is why the red, um, the, the, the current marked in, in red is also called load current. It supplies the load circuit with energy. And we refer to the current which remains in this current divider uh, part of the, of the circuit. This is uh, referred to as divider current because the current is remaining within the um, original current divider part of the circuit. We have two circuits, we have two currents now. We have the load current and we have the divider current and the sum of both makes up the, the amount of current flowing through the first resistor, which is in this on this slide at least, which is currently not visible, which, but which is placed in front of R2 in the, in the setup of the voltage divider. And as with voltage sources, the current counting arrow always is directed against the direction of the voltage counting arrow. The current is flowing upwards away from the positive terminal. And then it reaches the first resistor. And in the reference arrow system of this passive component here, the voltage drop arrow is directed into the same direction as the current counting arrow. And as the current is flowing downwards, so is uh, the current counting arrow is pointing downwards, so is the voltage drop counting arrow. So the voltage drop arrow is going from top to bottom for the first resistor and also for the second resistor and for the third resistor. And now we can construct the first loop equation which uh, goes like this. We start beneath the first um, the, beneath the voltage source. Uh, we count it negative because we move against the counting arrow direction minus u plus u1 because we move into the direction of the counting arrow for the first resistor plus u2. Um, same argument here and then we reach back uh, we arrive back at the negative terminal of the voltage source and this is why we uh, place the zero here on the right side of the uh, of the um, equation here so minus u plus u1 plus u2 equals zero we can do the same for the um, for this small loop here we can simply start uh, beneath the um, second resistor um, we move against the direction of the counting arrow minus u2 we move into the direction of the counting arrow for R3, so plus U3 equals zero. So these two voltages are equal. And the third equation we will um, make use of here is the uh, equation of currents flowing into and out of this junction K1. Um, according to Kirchhoff's first rule, if you have watched the video, we can simply say that the sum of the incoming currents is identical to the sum of the outgoing currents um, and all currents summed up together um, are identical to zero. So I1 coming from top, a positive sign here because it's flowing into the junction, minus I2, minus I3 equals zero. So um, armed with these equations here, we can tackle the problem of the loaded voltage divider now. And the first step um, is to employ the second loop equation. And because R2 and R3, um, because they share the same potentials um, above and below, um, the uh, relation can be found that both voltages are identical as well. U2 equals U3. That's the first observation which we uh, which we need here. Secondly, we can use Ohm's law to replace um, the currents in the junction um, equation here for K1. So the sum of all currents flowing into and out of the junction is zero. We replace the currents um, by U1 divided by R1, U2 by R2, U3 by R3 equals zero. And because we are looking for U2, we can simply replace U1 
uh, in the equation by using um, the, equa the equation from the first um, loop, which states that the sum of all voltages is zero. And this can be rearranged to, to um, isolate you one on the left side. And on the right side, it says voltage drop of the power source minus voltage drop across the second resistor. So we can now use U1 to replace the unknown in the junction equation for K1, which we're going to do on the next slide. And from the combination of all these equations, you can now see that we have eliminated all unknown voltages. We now have only U2 to consider here. We have um, replaced U1 with the equation which we have just seen on the bottom of the previous slide. We have um, replaced U3 by simply setting it to U2 because of the voltage um, identity between these parallel resistors. And now we have an equation with only a single unknown, which is U2, and the rest of the parameters is known to us. So we can solve this equation here for U2, which is this rather lengthy equation here. And um, this gives us the voltage drop across the bottom resistor based on the sizes and the relations and the ratios of um, the other resistors in the, in the loaded circuit, R1, R2, and R3, multiplied with the voltage of the power source. Okay, so let's put this to the test. Let's uh, solve a small exercise here. The task is to find the voltage which we measure across R2 using this multimeter here with an internal resistance. It's, it's a rather bad multimeter. It's not ma made by this manufacturer here. This multimeter here has a much, much higher internal resistance, but just for the sake of this exercise, let's assume it has an, an internal resistance of 1000 ohms. And for this internal resistance, um, this setup here is going to change a little bit. So U2 is the, um, is the parameter we are looking for and the rest is given to us as well as the source voltage which is at 10 volts for the setup here. So what's the voltage drop across R2 for this setup here? Try to compute it by yourselves. Press pause now and on the next slide I will give you my sample solution for this exercise. Okay, now let's have a look at the sample solution in which we are using the equation we have just derived um, on, the, on the slide before the previous one. Let's enter the values here, 10 volts for the power source, all the various resistors here, and this provides us with a voltage drop across R2 of 4.76 volts, roughly. And if we simulate the circuit, which you can see here, you can see that uh, the computation is perfectly fine. We um, get a voltage drop, which we measure with this perfect multimeter here in the circuit simulation of 4.762 volts. So we have now solved this problem of computing the voltage drop across a loaded voltage divider based on the values of these three resistors. And now let's summarize the major takeaways. The first is that the unloaded voltage divider only applies if the current through the resistors under consideration is identical, is equal. And if a load is connected to one of the resistors, the formula for the so-called loaded voltage divider must be used, which we have derived in this in this video here. And this formula can be, can be arrived at if you consider the loop equations in the loaded um, voltage divider network as well as the junction equation, that's the point where the currents meet which are flowing inside this, this network, net network and also by using Ohm's law to isolate or to, to integrate um, the parameters which you are looking for. And in practice, just as a rule of thumb, you often find that the load resistance connected in parallel should be approximately somewhere between five to ten times the size of the resistance in the main branch of the voltage divider. This rule of thumb here actually has a practical meaning because if you simulate the loaded voltage divider and, and change the values of the load resistor, you will find that you can choose between the stability of the voltage, which means um, is it a voltage which um, is guaranteed to be stable and as close to the target voltage as, as possible or, or as, as, as is required, or do you prefer to have a low energy consumption in the branch of the current of the voltage divider? Because um, if you recall the, the, um, the setup of the network, you have R1 at top, you have R2 at the bottom, that's the basis of the voltage divider, and then you connect the load across, across um, R2. And of course, if a uh, strong current is flowing through R2, this strong current is generating heat and thus an energy loss inside the load, in, inside uh, the resistor R2, and it's, it's not flowing 
into uh, into the the load resistor. So what you want is a low power consumption inside the resistor, which uh, which belongs to the to, to the voltage divider. And on the other hand, you also want a very stable voltage drop across this resistor number two. And both goals um, do not coincide. Uh, they are uh, on two ends of the spectrum and if you um, set it to five times greater uh, than the resistance in the main branch then you go for a lower energy consumption and if you set it to ten times greater than the resistance in the main branch then you go for a higher voltage stability. That's all for now. If you have any questions drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. I wish you a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.